Shiva. The only idol you can find for Shiva is the Shiva Lingam. Okay. It's rock. It's the only, it's only supposed to be the only true idol for Shiva. I mean, I, I have no idea, right? I'm sure that there, there might be some bicker, some banter, or somebody that has something to say. But nonetheless, the way I understand it from my Western point of view, from the little bit of uh, Hinduism that, that I've been able to understand, I understand Hindu ism is a religion and Indian people are a uh, culture okay uh, but um, but in my in my basic understandings of uh, Western understandings of Hinduism uh, Shiva has no idol right he has the lingam if that is to be acceptable, and I, I don't know, I might be stepping all over the controversy, I have no idea. Uh, but what I find so interesting is, is that, uh, you see, I don't know that this fits, okay? I just share a little bit of, just from the heart, what comes to me. But Shiva, God, generator, operator, destroyer. Shiva is the destroyer, the god of death. Okay. Um, he, uh, if you look at a crucifix, you see Jesus crucified on a cross. I don't know, I'm sure I'm going to offend somebody, but it's just a thought. In a lot of ways, you could actually put Shiva up on that cross. And, and, and I want to tell you why. Because Shiva, to my understanding, from my Western viewpoint, Shiva is the Adi Yogi. Okay? Shiva learned, uh, was enlightened to, and either i don't know again western point point of view but i don't know if he created yoga or if yoga came to him or if yoga was departed to him or how that happened but it's to me my my understanding from what i currently understand is that shiva would be the progenitor of yoga okay and in a lot of ways jesus on the cross putting himself up on the cross it just it so speaks to me as to the pain and the things that Shiva would have done to have mastered yoga to bring it about to understand the human physicality to uh, push the body to make it so that the body can be expanded upon to make it so that you can grow spiritually and so on And to even think about his responsibility and his dedication to figure out the human form and develop a way, a path, so that the human being could enlighten oneself, so the human being could, uh, I believe it's called puja, but I, I, I don't know, it, it doesn't. I have a problem with the English language. I, I, you know, I believe it's called puja, would be worship, okay? Uh, but to have devoted himself, uh, and here's the, here's the, here's the get-go of all this, the way the spirituality works, the way the spiritual people work, okay, is that when Shiva, the Adi Yogi, when he when he started his practice, when he when he stepped into this learning yoga so that he could teach people, or learning the yantra so that he could teach his wife, and, and so on. Uh, the amount of responsibility and weight that he carried, he 
didn't carry that amount of responsibility for weight. I mean, you know, maybe how dare I say so, but he couldn't have done it for himself, okay? I almost think there's a universal law to that, okay? These things are done so that paths, he did it so that there would be a path open for you and me through yoga. And I mean you and me of any color, any gender, baby. Whoever you are, wherever you are, you glorious, you gorgeous, okay? And if the world ain't told you yet, you're doing good, okay? Don't you worry about nothing, okay? But I'm saying that this this being, he he went through the teachings uh, internally through meditation, through guidance. I, I don't know. I don't know the story, okay? But he went through the teaching and the understanding. Um that he was forming a path for other people was that he was making a way for people to be able to expand themselves and that that's that beautiful okay 